All right. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, and a delightful morning to everyone. I can see a very impressive numbers of enthusiast attendees for today's session. So um, to the esteemed uh, speaker today, Dr. Tamar Waring Kenneson, and to everyone who lends our time for your curiosity, welcome to our webinars for today's Corpus or WS Journal class with AI as your assistant, published before proposal defense. It's a very uh, interesting topic for this webinar today. Thank you for converging here today. My name is Dr. Ilail Ain Binti Muhammad Aznan, representing UITM Police Branch. It's been a privilege to be your moderator for today's session. Right, so uh, the key highlights for today's webinars, we're going to look onto the high impact publications, going to delve into the constitutes of high impact publications and the critical elements. Maybe we're going to look onto the principles of publishing papers. Um, the hourglass theory, if I'm not mistaken, that's going to be introduced by Dr. Tawa today, and also the leveraging AI tools for all the researchers. So I know that everybody knows our uh, speaker today, but it will not be uh, it will be unpleasant for me if I'm not going to introduce our speaker today. So here is uh, Dr. Tamalvarin or Dr. Tawa, um, who is a visionary in academic uh, publishing. Not only he completed his PhD under three years, but he also founded Proofreading by a UK PhD, which is a consulting giant now spreads knowledge across 33 countries, including the UK, Saudi Arabia, Korea, Australia, and many more. Dr. Salva also had garnered over 90,000 followers in his academic Facebook page, which is creating a vibrant community of scholars and researchers. And he also secured uh, Malayuring 23.7 million for research grants. That's very impressive, doctor. Right. So here he is today, the extraordinary Dr. Tawa. So please, the, the floor is all yours. Thank you, Dr. Eli. Am, am I saying it right, Dr. Eli, right? Yes, correct, Dr. Okay, Eli. All right. Thank you, Dr. Eli, for, for, for hosting today, for moderating today. And thank you, Dr. Kairon, as well, for organizing the, this, this class and uh, never ending support. From UITM police, appreciate that a lot. And I'm opening it up to all UITM students as well and academicians. So um, I think I've been doing this with UITM police for several years now, <coughs> which uh, eventually resulted in our own MOU as well. So very thankful for that. Uh, and uh, we will continue contributing uh, to the entire UITM family. Lah. Okay. So um, welcome back, everyone, uh, all the participants who always join. And I never give up in listening to my uh, uh, two hours of talks, hopefully not ranting, but no actual knowledge. Uh, so let's get started. So let me share my screen first. Okay, so I would advise all of you to uh, keep your mic muted. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask via chat box. If you want to unmute and speak, maybe we can do it towards the end of the class so that it doesn't uh, spoil the flow of the class. Okay, uh, I mean, for the benefit of everyone. Lah. Uh, so if you have any questions, keep your chat box open because your peers will be asking questions as well, which will be uh, relevant to you. So you can learn from my answers as well. Don't feel um, awkward to ask questions. Feel free to ask questions. That's what make, make the class more interesting. Okay. So today we are going to look at Scopus Web of Science Journals uh, with AI as your assistant, how to publish or get a paper accepted before proposal defense. Whether it can be done or cannot be done, we'll see today based on several results that we have seen so far. Um, and um, today's class, I'm not going to teach you how to use AI to write. I think the one everyone knows already. Okay, but how to carefully use it so that uh, we don't uh, basically plant a dynamite under our feet. Okay, without us knowing. So that's the main, main agenda of the class today. When I say planting dynamite, you will understand later why I say so. Not on the ethical perspective. Ethical perspective is something that you've got to answer the university, so I'm not going to go into that. But I'm rather going to go into the factual information, okay, the facts that is being given and um, how how real are the facts and how you have to filter it out. Okay, so the filtration part is where you need to be very, very careful when it comes to um, large language models, LLMs, okay? So that's what we're going to look at today. Uh, and also um, all along about how how and when to extract journals from your proposal or thesis. Okay, so with that, let's get started. So I don't want to get into this. I think uh, Dr. Ella had done a very good job, so I'm going to skip this. I'm going to skip this as well. Uh, but just before that, 
Um, so the, um, the previous class we had, I think several months ago, we focused mostly on uh, thesis and proposal and as well as proposal defense and why bar and a bit on language. So we focused on uh, different key elements. Today, we are going to focus rather on <coughs> uh, publication fully. We're going to fully engage on publication and thesis to general conversion. We're not going to touch proposal or thesis today. Um, the next class, we're going to touch back uh, proposal and thesis. And today, we will continue looking into um, uh, the language space as well. Okay, It is something that we can never um, neglect. All right. So um, to everyone else who have joined us today from various parts of Malaysia, um, keep engaging. Uh, if you're doing anything else, keep it aside. You can do it later. If you have any questions, please ask in the uh, chat box. Eh? Excuse me. Okay. So um, usually I'll go through all my recorded classes where you can find it and all the templates that we have. But we're going to keep that aside today because I'm going to spend more time on the content of the class. But along the way, I will tell you where to go and find all the templates that we have designed uh, for free. You can download and use. Uh, and if possible, if you have time, you also look at all the past classes uh, that I've been recording. I think about 130 plus classes, which you can go and watch as well. So today we are going to cover what are high impact journals, how to find a journal, types of journal papers, potential extraction of journals from a thesis, extraction processes, Cover letter, if you have enough time today, usually class at, at, at this this level, this this crowd, usually won't have time to cover cover letter because there'll be a lot of QA coming in, but we shall see as we go. Okay. Okay, so this one I know publication requirement for UITM. I know a PhD will be like, you know, two scopers or two eras and so on, and then have academician will have different requirements and so on. So um I know UIT have been working with UIT for many years now, so I'm going to skip this part and I'm going to go straight into this. Okay, so um, before we get started, to all the participants today, um, along the class today, we're going to also share some of the templates I've designed. If you don't know where to download those templates, if you're not in my Telegram group, please let me know in the chat box. I'll give you the Telegram link where you can go and download those templates. Okay, you can let me know in the chat box. And if you're not in our WhatsApp group, UITM WhatsApp group, you can let us know. UITM WhatsApp group is where the um, uh, the grad school and um, all the other members of UITM will be there. All our future classes, everything will be announced there. So if you're not in the WhatsApp group, if you're not in the Telegram group, please let me know in the chat box so that I can share the links and you can go and download all the relevant documents and materials and so on. Okay. <coughs> Okay, so um, <clears throat> for WhatsApp group, it will be this particular link, right? So this is WhatsApp group link. And then for uh, Telegram group, this would be the link. So from this particular Telegram, uh, the, this particular link, you will be able to um, uh, basically um, gain access to my TikTok videos, a lot of educative TikTok videos, all my uh, um, classes, free classes, uh, notes, as well as Telegram group. Okay, so I'll give you guys two minutes so that you can join, or three minutes, like you guys can join the WhatsApp group and also the Telegram group. Okay, so this will be the Telegram group. Okay. So you'll basically be joining this particular, I think majority of you might be already here, but if you are not, <clears throat> then this is where you have to be to download all the notes. So example, if you want to download all my templates, then you can just simply, uh, let me just tag it for you guys, it'll be easier. So you can download all these templates in case you want to use it for your proposal development, thesis development, journal development, all of these are usable. So let me tag it. UITM templates. And then um, if you need notes on systematic review, so this will be all the review notes, review paper notes. Then uh, oh, yeah. this would be the Prisma diagrams. SLR Prisma diagrams for you to download and use. You can reuse the diagrams. You can redraw based on that. And then uh, these are all the sample papers. 
sample review papers. Okay, so you guys can download all of it from here. Okay, and then WhatsApp group, I think it's pretty straightforward. You guys can join already. So let me just check if people are still joining or not. Sure. So we have students who are still joining. So I'll let everyone join first. The uh, link tree link that I've shared will take you to Telegram. Let me just share very quickly. Will take you to various uh, channels of my soft match. You can get to TikTok channel, Telegram group, um, all the free classes that you can watch and learn. And if you just click it, you'll be able to see all the free classes here. Okay, and then um, all the free notes you can download as well. And this would be the link to our YouTube channel. But I think I have to change the channel. We have uh, created another new channel now. I'll be updating that soon. Okay, so that is that. And you can subscribe here if you want to as well. Okay, so I think we can uh, start. All right, so uh, coming to the class now, um, the actual class today, the, 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 the question of the day is, how to get acceptance or publishing before proposal depends, possible or not? I would say there are opportunities, okay, if you plan and design everything precisely. Uh, it's not easy. I mean, publishing itself is not easy, but getting it on time is even difficult. You may ask why I have to publish or accept before proposal defense. Up to you. If you want to wait after proposal defense, it's fine. Nothing wrong with that as long as it's before your viva. Okay. So this is a very good example I can share. This is from uh, Nasir. Okay. He's from uh, Warwick University, UK. It's, I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's a top eight university in the UK, uh, Russell Group University. <laughs> so um, we coach these chapters one to three. After the chapters one to three, uh, then uh, we also coached on the um, uh, protocol and systematic review paper. Okay, so there were two papers. There were uh, uh, there was protocol paper, which is also known as concept paper. So why they call it protocol? In medical area, they call it as protocol. Medical health sciences, they call it protocol paper. While in um, in social sciences, business, engineering, and other other uh, subject areas, they call it concept paper and as well as a systematic review paper. So he extracted two papers. This is the protocol paper. They got accepted. Okay. Uh, Q2, impact factor 1.7. SCIE web of science. It's a web of science journal that got accepted within six months. Uh, three revisions, single submission only to this journal, JMIR, a Canadian journal. All right. So um, that was a protocol paper. However, the systematic review paper took him about 11 months, if I'm not mistaken, almost 11 months or probably more. So the, the, the important note here is no one can guarantee how long it's going to take. No, no one can tell you that. Okay. Uh, six months, if you ask me, it's full of luck. Okay. To be honest, it's a very good paper. His protocols are very well established. Uh, and, um, and I would say the stars align very well. So you get the editor, you get the right reviewers, you get the review preview process very fast. You get the, the, the acceptance out. Everything happens very fast. So some people get that. Not all the time. Okay, like a systematic review paper uh, took more time. So these are the full papers. So this was the protocol paper, which took about six months. <coughs> and then this was the systematic review paper. Okay, the systematic review paper, which took about, if I'm not mistaken, about 11 months to get acceptance. So you can actually get more than that. But both, both were web of science papers lah. So this is a very good example to show that it is possible. Then on the other hand, we also have papers that will take ages before you get acceptance. This is one good example. Um, we just got two acceptances today. One is with Cogen uh, Education. That took almost uh, two years, one month. Yes, that took very, very long, Cogen Taylor Francis. We just got the news out today, acceptance. And then we got one more today, I forgot which journal is it. It is also about one year plus, also about one year plus. So um, this is another good example from uh, Ellis. Okay, that is Ellis from Taylor's. Uh, so same story, after coaching chapters one to three, uh, that is Ellis put all the effort, she extracted out the paper. Um, and then um, this is where the mistake happened. Why why, why um, Ellis' paper took more time? Okay, so Ellis took out everything, I mean, extract out everything, and then she, she went and looked for journal and tried to submit everything. So she went to chat GPT, she tried to get 
some uh, proposal on where she can publish and so on. And then it gives it gives some recommendation, which I'll show you later. The entire journey, how it happened. Uh, I recreated that sort of the journey. Okay, how it happened. So it gives some general recommendation. But being student, she didn't know the differences between impact factor, web of science, you know, <clears throat> what level of the paper she has and what her journal actually is. And there's a lot of difference, okay? Like uh, similar to uh, you having 20,000 ringgit, okay? And then you have, uh, and then you have Proton Saga in front of you, and then you have Ferrari in front of you. And then with 20,000 ringgit, ringgit, you intend to buy Ferrari, which won't be sufficient. Even the down payment won't be enough. All right, so that is the difference. Both are cars. Okay, both are cars. With 20,000 ringgit being your journal, okay, you can buy a uh, broken saga, definitely. Okay, it's also a car. But at the same time, if you look at Ferrari, it's for you, it's also a car. For people who doesn't know the technicalities, the, the value of the car, the, the design of the car, the technology of the car, they might feel like yeah, these both are the same cars. Okay, I mean, these both are cars. So what difference is going to make? So I just want to buy one of my Ferrari. Why not? It looks nicer. Right? So that is the difference. That is where <clears throat> impact factor, uh, web of science, scopus, white tie all comes into play. That is where you need to design very carefully. You should know what is your paper, what is the strength of your paper, whether your paper can get into all these very high spec journals or not. So what happened was, at least have a very simple concept paper, okay? She submitted to a uh, very high impact journals, impact factor 9, impact factor 8, impact factor 11. So she gets rejected, lah, rejected after rejection after rejection. So she submitted first 23rd December 2022, rejected within a few days, editor's desk, and then 3rd February again, she submitted, rejected again. 19 March, submitted again, rejected again. Then 28 March, submitted, rejected again. Okay, there were, there were two important uh, uh, failure points which we should focus on. Okay, this is important and you need to understand this because this is where you can save your time. See, time is of essence, whether you are student or you are an academician, academician, you got KPI every year. Student, obviously, you need to publish as fast as possible to complete the requirements to publish and if, I mean, to, to graduate. And if you want to publish more, then you also want to publish one hour to wait for very long, right? Why not finish it fast? Why the delay happens most of the time? It's because of multiple rejections. As you go, you submit, reject, submit, reject, submit, reject. That, that's where most of the time being wasted. That happens most of the time because you submit to the wrong journal, not the wrong scope. Eh? Scope can be the same, but the level of the journal. So you have like the bottom layer scope, Scopus Q4 journal, all the way up, you've got Web of Science Q1 with impact factor 10, 11, and so on. That is a huge difference. Okay, so that's where when Alice asked for recommendations, Alice used chat GPT to proofread in the paper. And then she asked for recommendation. Okay, and the recommendations were all very high spec. 10 impact factor, 8 impact factor, 11 impact factor, and so on. So she got reject, 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 reject. And then what she did, she came to us again. She asked us to proofread and paraphrase. We transform the entire paper and then I advise that don't go for very high spec papers because this is a concept paper. Okay, it is not an empirical paper or it is not a um, high level systematic review, uh, meta analysis detailed kind of paper. It is not. Okay, it is review paper itself can be many different kinds. All right, so right after that, uh, she submitted 15 May to this journal, Small Enterprise Research. It is a Scopus Q2 ESCI. A web of science, impact factor 1.7. It's not a full-fledged uh, SSCI paper yet. So it is still an ESCI paper. Uh, 15 May last year submitted, and after several revisions, I think she went through three or four revisions. Even this, she went through three or four revisions and finally accepted last April, 3rd April, just a couple of months ago. All right, and this is that, that particular paper. We're going to explore this paper more, right? So now, the, before we continue further, we've got many participants today. My first question to all of you, I'm using, I'm throwing a lot of terminologies here. I'm telling web of science, scopus, quartile, Q1, Q2, impact factor, uh, SCIE, ESCI. Do all of you actually understand these terminologies? Because without you understanding these terminologies, you're going to have trouble following the class today. So it is uh, within your interest to let me know if you guys understand these terminologies or not. Like, do you guys know what is impact factor? Do you guys know what is site score, scopus, web of science, um, impact factor ranging, quartiles? Everyone else, don't feel shy to say don't know. Eh? 
If you don't know, you can say don't know. This is the time for you to say don't know. <laughs> it it takes it takes a lot to say don't know, especially in our in our culture again. But it's important to say don't know if you don't know. That will will really uh, reduce a lot of your issues in life, especially in PhD. Okay, so good that you guys tell you don't know. So I'm going to explain to you now. All right. So you have two indexing, two major indexing uh, indices. Huh? So you got Scopus, you got Web of Science. Right. So uh, there are many more. There is Google Scholar. Even Google Scholar is an index. Okay, uh, but uh, it's uh, the most largest index uh, because the flow will accept everything. That's why Google Scholar is the most comprehensive database. Google Scholar will accept from the top one to the bottom five military journal, everything and go in. Everything must go. Okay, Google Scholar. Then you have index indices like uh, PubMed. You have ERA. ERA is uh, is um, another pretty low standard index as well. Okay, sorry to say this. I know uh, many uh, of us here locally we like to publish in ERA journals, but I would say please don't. You are wasting a lot of your results, good reviews into a paper that is not very well recognized. ERA is not a good, although it's called Australian, but it's not really well recognized index. Okay, the very well recognized index worldwide are these two: Scopus, Web of Science. Okay, in Western countries, UK, US, mostly Web of Science. In Asian countries, now we are looking at Scopus and Web of Science. That is how they fly. Everywhere you go, it's only these two. Then you have everything else is only extra. It's only additional. So your focus must be always on these two. Okay, that is the first thing. Now let's break this down. Scopus, you have two uh, metrics. One is quartile. Q1 to Q4, right? Then what? What and how a journal is defined between Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4? They use site score. Okay, site score. Eh? So site score is a metric where which measures which measures individually the number of citation a paper gets in a year, accumulatively in a journal. So now let's say you're submitting to a journal of uh, small enterprise research. This journal might have four volumes per year, okay, maybe four volumes per year. So uh, each volume will have 10 journals, okay, 10 papers, like example, right, 10 papers. So from that 10 papers, um, they will measure how many citations per paper is getting, okay, over a year, over two years, over three years, over four years, over five years. That's why you have site score one year, two years, uh, two years, three years, four years, and five years, okay? So that is how you accumulate citation. Now, that is called site score. The more citation a, a paper gets, okay, then the more site, so a, a journal is combination of multiple papers published in a year or in a quarter. Lah. So then from that mix up a volume. Okay, one, one, one series or one volume. Lah. So the citation of this one volume will define the quartile accumulatively. Okay, accumulatively over years. So that's what will define. That's why every paper you submit, they want to see whether you'll get citation or not. Them getting citation is more important than anything else in a journal's life cycle. Citation is very, very important. Only then they can grow in quartile. All right? Then only from Q4, they can go to Q1. So that is Scopus. Now, same scenario, Web of Science also. Okay, they also have Q1 to Q4, but they don't use site score. They use impact factor. So that means when you submit a journal, journal accepted already, then I'm writing a new journal. The more new journals cite your paper, your citation will go, will go up. So similarly, in that one journal, many journals get lots of citations. All the journal citation will go up, okay? which will increase the impact factor or the site score or both which will increase the placement of the journal in terms of ranking between Q1 to Q4. So under Q1, if you go for more higher spec, this is how last time we used to publish in the UK, uh, they won't just look at Q1, they'll look at Q1 top 10. Okay, within Q1 itself, there is a ranking top 10, which I'll explain in the next slide. Now. Okay, so that means this top 10, number one will be the best cited journal in the entire a uh, feel of that particular subject, and that is like the number one journal. Lah. So this is what, uh, uh, not only you can type down the question in the chat box, eh? uh, so that is how 
Q1 to Q4 is defined and that is what impact factor. So one more, one other thing, impact factor cannot be used by scopus. Side score cannot be used by web of sites. Cannot. Okay? No way. Because it is a trademark, trademark term. Web of Science owns impact factor. Scopus owns side score. Okay, that is now very clear. So under Web of Science, there are Scopus very straightforward. It's only Scopus. But with Web of Science, they made life very difficult. So what they did uh, to make life more complicated, they created ESCI, SSCI, SCIE, AHCI. Okay, ESCI is the entry level, like trial, lah, trial internship, lah, we would say. Let me close my WhatsApp. Being just now. Sure. So ESCI is like entry level like this. This is not. This is this journal is not uh, SSCI yet. Okay, they are cal calculating the citation already, so you can see the impact factor. But it's not fully SSCI yet. So the the requirement to accept in this kind of journal might be slightly easier than SSCI full fledged. Okay. So then, if ESCI pass through, the journal will be uh, will be indexed either as Social Science Citation Index or Science Citation Index Expanded or Arts and Humanities Citation Index, one of it. So linguistic language and so on will normally go into AHCI, uh, physics, engineering, computer science, and all that will go into SCIE, medical, uh, business management, information system, uh, Accounting, finance, all that will go into SSCI. So that's how they define different areas. Okay. So that is the whole mind map lah, of how um, uh, Scopus and Web of Science define their journals. Okay. So I hope that is clear. Uh, I've explained the whole. Okay. Any questions? All clear so far? And one more important thing you need to understand uh, some journals will be in a Scopus, some journals will be in Web of Science. Some journals will be cross-indexed, okay? So when you write review paper, concept paper, and so on, I strongly encourage you to stick with the Scopus ones only. Don't go with the Web of Science one because it's very difficult. I'm not saying impossible. I'm not saying impossible, but difficult. It will take time. Okay, it will take time. The example, I can show you my own paper. <coughs> okay, this is my own paper that I, I uh, co-authored with uh, SJ Professor Effie and also Dr. Hirol. And uh, the entire team, uh, their students and uh, the entire supervision team and so on. So we, we worked on these people for, for quite some time, actually for quite some time. Uh, this is the title of the paper. Rain, rain, go away, come again the other day to climate change, to climate variations enhance the spread of COVID-19. Why COVID-19? We wrote this paper in 2022. Okay, it took us almost two years to get this paper accepted. Okay, because we only wanted Web of Science Q1, nothing else. So we submitted this to uh, many different journals or rejected. Finally, this paper uh, went into review since uh, beginning of last year, if I'm not mistaken. Beginning of last year, and then this year finally got accepted. It's a British medical journal, BMJ, uh, Globalization and Health, Impact Factor 10.8. Okay, Impact Factor 10.8 is considered very, very high. This is top 10 journal, uh, and the open access fee also is crazy. I think all of us combined, we shared the cost 15,800 ringgit. Okay. Although we paid 15,000 plus ringgit for one single piece of journal, yet it took us more than one year to accept. So paying doesn't mean you get things fast and it doesn't get easy. Those were the days, the, those were the days called with NDPI and Frontiers and all those things. This BMJ, PLOS One, ITP Access, LCB, Elyon, they are all definitely difficult. They are going to be easy. Okay. All right. So this is how the level of, and this systematic review paper, this is the level of paper you can look at how you write when you write for Web of Science uh, Q1 and so on. Okay, even you have data and graphs within the, the say, review paper. Okay, so you can see more graphs coming up. Okay, so that's, that's the paper basically. All right, so uh, that's how long you need to wait. So that's why I say, Empirical paper is a bit more easier to publish in, uh, not easier, but a bit more straightforward to publish in Web of Science. Review paper, I will always encourage, stick with Scopus. Don't go with Web of Science unless you have time to wait, two years, three years, and so on. I won't say all the papers, some can get earlier, but majority of them takes time. Okay? So, now going to how high can review papers go? Like what kind of spec we're looking at. Let's say some of you inspire or have the aspiration to 
publish very high impact paper, but then you don't have uh, data. Uh, so I see people are raising hand. If you're raising hand, you've got question, you just ask in the uh, chat box, eh? Just type it out, you have to type out your question and then we'll come back to you. Okay. So uh, these are some good examples I have personally worked on, whether we proofread, paraphrase, or we coach or consulted, either of it we have done. So this number one paper today uh, that I've seen in, in my own firm, uh, Impact Factor 15.9 Q1, SCIE Web of Science, rank number two out of 46, narrative review paper. If you want to read and learn how to write very high impact uh, review paper, look at this sample. You can download this from my Telegram group. Okay, you can download it from that. You can have a go and see what exactly they did. Okay, and then this is in engineering area. This is in food science area. Food science area Q1 impact factor 15.3. Uh, rank number two. See, this got ranking. Okay, it's Q1. Not only Q1, it even has rank. This is number two in the world. This is number two in the world. Conceptual review paper. This was UPM. This was UTM. This was UPM. Uh, these are all a bit aged paper already. Eh? Quite some time already. Because you don't see all this very frequently. This is another very good paper. Social science area. I believe a lot of uh, systematic review coming out of UITM from social science area. This is a very good example you can look at. This is not systematic review, huh? but this is just conceptual review. But you can see how uh, Dr. Paris had written. So this was uh, one of the longest uh, time taken paper, many rejection and many resubmissions and so on. Uh, Q1 Impact Factor 13.4, SSCI Web of Science, rank number four. <clears throat> and this is none other than Dr. Harold's paper. This is his second systematic review paper. The first paper was the mirror, mirror of the wall. That's the first paper we worked on. Then this is the second paper we worked on. Q1 Impact Factor 11.1, rank number 6 out of 75, systematic review. So if you want to write a systematic review or look at a very good example, you can look at this. This is a very good example paper. So it, why I ask you to look at example papers? Because that gives you inspiration. That gives you idea what exactly you need to do, how you should structure your introduction, your literature review, your methodology for systematic review, what diagrams you should put in, what graphs you should put in, and then how do you explain that in results, and then how you bring down the discussion, and so on and so forth. Okay? All right. How to publish in high impact? High impact being, Scopus can be high impact as well. Q4 can be high impact as well. If you're a beginner, you're writing journal for the first time, for you, Scopus Q4 is high impact. For an experienced author, experienced publisher, for them, Q1 Web of Science is high impact. So it's very subjective of where you look at, where you are at in your life, you know, when it comes to research. So don't worry. Start with the lowest if you can, Scopus Q4, Q3, and then work your way up. Some people can go straight direct to Web of Science Q1. Some people can, some people cannot. It doesn't matter. As long as you publish, just go with it, all right? So um, <clears throat> when it comes to publishing high impact, very important to do very good research. That goes without saying. Formulate very, very important RQ and RU, okay, with, to support good research. Try not to work alone. Work in a team that is very helpful, very, very helpful to each other. Example, this particular paper, okay, we all took um, uh, parts and parcel of the work and we developed it concurrently. And very, very important contribution that I recently made in this paper uh, towards the end was this title itself. This title was not allowed. Editors say they, the, the reviewers say they, they don't agree with this fancy title. They just want straight for technical title. I had to write a, a, a very strong recommendation, very strong justification personally to the editor saying that why we have to maintain this title. What is the reason? What is the uh, SEO behind that? What is the reason behind that? All that you need to explain if you want some fancy titles in your paper. Okay? And to support all that, um, to support all the good research, very good methodology is required and amazing results. Now, all this will work out if you have data. If you don't have data, then you're up for scoping or systematic needs, which also workable. This is the early papers that you should write. Okay? Now, this is the embodiment or the plan for your paper, which you can produce. Okay? This is your body, lah, body of knowledge. Then you have your both feet. Your paper is going to stand on this feet. You need to have very solid writing, the way that you write down the story, how you bring it down, and your proofreading. Very, very crucial. Your structural writing 
academic writing and your language should go hand in hand. Otherwise, your reviewers, you won't even cross your editor's desk. Many of you might have experienced editor's desk rejection. That is one of the major reasons. That's why we put it as the footing for this, as a support factor for all of the above six boxes, right? What else? Okay. When, especially comes to review paper, a lot of people don't write review paper. They write summary paper. Well, why, why I say summary paper? Because when you want to have an informative review paper with take home message, that means you are reading many papers, 30 papers, 40 papers, 50 papers to write a review paper, right? Now in that review paper, you cannot just summarize what others are doing and then expect everyone to, uh, you know, uh, recognize your paper or, you know, go for review and so on. Your paper must have your voice, your critical voice. You summarize all of what they have done. And then from there, what is it? What that you have found? What is different? What is the new thing there? Okay. What is the problem? All that you need to discuss. Okay. You need to do your own review process. Then again, I stress on the structure and perfect flow of the story. Avoid careless mistake and bad language at all times. You have to avoid that. And you have only one opportunity. You have only one opportunity to cross editor's desk. Once editor don't agree, they can reject it directly and you're just wasting your time. You have to reformat and resubmit, reformat and resubmit. Every time you reformat, the word count will be different. So you have to reduce the word count, increase the word count and all of this. And to support that, that, that publication journey, always have very good cover letter to support a paper. And this is uh, the difficult of all, patience. Patience, a lot of patience required. Anyone tells you can get paper accepted in 24 hours, 48 hours, one week, one month, two months, all of that are scam. Most of it, 95% are scam. No one can tell how long a journal will take to publish, right? Even the editor, the editor himself cannot see because they have to send to reviewers and up to the reviewers, unless the editor sets up the paper, the editor talks to the reviewer person, that means they like, no, they watch that personally, hey, I'm sending you this paper, review it fast. Then the reviewer takes two to three reviewers, they quickly review, da, 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 they send back. Then the editor takes personally, they leave all the job aside, huh? they take it, they say, okay, I have all this paper now. Okay, I'm gonna go through, okay, all, okay. Minor revision, go. If you have that kind of network, that kind of connection, then you can do that. If you don't have that kind of connection, then no one can do that. And all the people who post on Facebook, all the advertisement they're doing, uh, you know, publication, fast publication, Instagram, also you can see many, all of those are scam. I will tell you, if I can get it done, why my own paper is taking more than two years? Okay, with the vast connection and networks that we have all over the world, if we can work it out, we would definitely work it out. I can tell you, nowadays, the sooner a Scopus publishes, or the sooner a Web of Science publishes, they're going to get blacklisted. Very quickly, they're going to get blacklisted. All right? A body, a, a separate independent body is working on it now. Okay? If you want to check it out, go and read this. Retraction Watch. These guys are very aggressive now. They are worse than Bill's list. Okay? You can see the amount of news coming out. University president faces allegations of duplication and says no, no misconduct. All authors they're going after. The Wolf in Scopus Clothing, another hijack journal has indexed nearly 900 articles. So all these are very, very big uh, news happening all around the world. Okay, many papers are getting retracted. Okay, that means you publish, you go into Scopus, even after one year, they can pull out the paper back because they say this one went through shortcut. Never went through proper peer review process. All this can happen, all right? So if you want to check out this website, go and check out, then you will know that you shouldn't trust any People who tells you one week, two weeks, one month, 48 hours, 24 hours, no one can tell you that unless the editor is like your best friend and the editor will try to help you individually, uh, then maybe care. All right. All right. This is the entire editorial process. So you as an author, once you submit the paper, you will think, okay, I submit the paper, editor going to check all the reviewers sitting next to the around him and then we're going to review. Uh, and then they're going to give back to the editor and the editor going to take and give it back to you. That's what some of you might be thinking, but that's not the case. The editor staff is somewhere, editorial staff. The editor is sitting somewhere. Maybe the editorial staff is in, in Netherlands 
the editor might be in Brazil, the reviewer might be in Japan, might be in Korea, might be in Malaysia. You know, they are all different places in the world. It takes very long time to communicate to each other because they are all in different job, different scope, holiday, work, grant, contracts, many different things, okay? So when you submit to an editor, even for the editor to open and check will take some time, all right? And if you don't do it properly, they're going to reject it outright. You're wasting your time. So always do your paper properly. I'll give you certain criteria that you should follow before you submit your paper to save your own time. Then from there, send to reviewers, okay? Now, reviewer speaking is the real painful part, okay? Because once you pick up reviewers, right, uh, they have to agree. That will take some time. That will take very long time, actually. After the reviewer said, okay, then they'll give back the assessment. Uh, editor will assess the reviewer's um, feedback. They will judge whether to reject, accept as it is, or stand for revision. All this takes time. That's why it takes very long time. And they cannot process without having three reviewers or two reviewers, some minutes. Now this minimum, they go in three reviewers. So they have to make sure that they get three reviewers. So this one will say no, this one will say no, this one will say no. After a few months, suddenly this one will say yes. Okay. So they got two reviewers now. Then they'll go one more. The floor will say no. Okay, then one more. Then the first say okay. Okay, now got three reviewers. Suddenly after they all almost finishing, then this guy will come and tell, hey, I can review the paper now. Uh, let me review. And then then they have to restart from zero again. So this one accept, this one is there, this one finish, finish. Now they have to wait for this one. This will take a couple of weeks to give back. So they have to wait. Okay, no choice. They have to wait. Because otherwise next time they won't do. Right? So this is the problem. This is why it takes time. Now, to how to quickly write a paper, how to quickly move forward in terms of paper. So, paraphrasing is a wrongly hated tool, and that, but that is the secret to speed writing. Okay, that is secret to speed writing. So right here, <coughs> you have your uh, example literature. Your yeah, example literature. You're going through this paper. You have to understand something. When you read a paper, um, you know that this paper somewhat sounds very similar okay, to what you want, all the citation, all the information, all the data. Because nowadays, every one of us are doing incremental research. None of us are doing fundamental research. We are not finding new particle. We are not finding new atom, okay, new, new, new element in chemical chemistry table. No. We are not doing it. Most of us are not doing it. Last time they used to do, but now no more. Now it's more of applied research, commercial research. So it's all incremental. Okay, they add a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit, make new PhD, a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit, make new PhD, okay? That's how it's going. Of course, the contribution will be significant, but the 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 the, the gap from here, they'll take one step. Then from there, another floor will take one step. That's how PhD is moving. The contribution can be significant, but the steps are rather small nowadays, okay? Therefore, it is only advantageous because most of the content can be reused. Citation, of course, you have to update citations, but the flow the idea, the source, all that can be used. So you can only take the content. I'm not asking you to copy here. Yeah? Take it out. Pick it up. Like this is a very appropriate content for me. Rewrite, paraphrase, add in your own wording, okay? Add in your own citations and so on, and quickly move. That's how you can quickly reverse engineer, write and move, okay? But having said that, when this kind of paraphrasing takes place, you should do your own paraphrasing. Then you can structure the sentences out. So this is a very good example of how paraphrasing can go wrong if you use a tool without your own intervention. You must, inter you must intervene when the tool is working for you. So example, this is one student from USM. Okay. He submitted this is uh, stored in repository USM for YMR, but he's writing paper now. So what happened? He used Quillboard to paraphrase his paper so that he can submit. Then outright rejected. Many times rejected. That yeah. when he checked with the editor, his editor said mostly out of context and a lot of fake information. So then we had to recheck. I did my own analysis and this is what I found just from a single paragraph. Okay, using quillboard, eh? uh, from a single paragraph. All the yellow color are bad structure and grammar. Okay, all the red color a total change of context. Okay, within one paragraph, all this red color are totally out of context. All right, totally change the entire meaning. Eh? The yellow part is still okay. You can fix your own language. Okay, but the red part is where 
the context will change largely. All right, context will change largely. So we want to avoid that as much as possible. So if you can, after the using Pillboard, I'm not telling you stop using Pillboard. If you want to use, you use. But make sure you check every statement line by line, whether it's actually true or not. Okay, a lot of information, fake information can take place. And I would suggest you, rather you can learn and rewrite your own so that you can get the best of the you know results. When you go through, you can know, okay, this part I need to add, this part I need to remove, and so on and so forth. Okay, you cannot let it, you cannot give 100% of the tool to do the job. You cannot, all right? Now, this is issue number one when you use tool for paraphrasing, context. Next item is studying in AI. This is a new problem, lah. okay? This is a new problem, rather new problem. Started April last year, 2023, but now it's only becoming uh, more uh, uh, effective, okay? As far as I know, last time uh, uh, UITM was using originality, but now I think they've gone back to 13, if I'm not mistaken. Please correct me if I'm wrong. And also, the most important thing, originality is all, was also bought over by 13. 13 now owns originality. Uh, so the 13 AI is, is, the engine is applicable across the board, all right? So this is the problem you may face. When you get AI to rewrite for you, okay, by the quill board, by the Grammarly AI, not the Grammarly normal, eh? Grammarly AI, chat GPT, perplexity, um, Jenny AI, anything like any tool you use to write with AI, I tried with quill board. Okay, after getting AI output, I use quill board premium. I still have the license until now. Okay, it was given to me. They asked me to promote the software, but I did not want to because uh, so much a problem, uh, but I still have the license I deal now. Quillboard Premium, okay? Uh, then I scan and turn it in, okay? Turn it in, this is the normal turn it in, this is the turn it in AI. How many of you have seen this turn it in AI before? This one, this number here. Have you guys seen that before? Okay. For those who say no, that means you're using student account, okay? Under student account, you can see the in AI. You can see this, okay, but you cannot see this. Unfortunately, that's how they're configured. Uh, tapi under instructor account and library account, that means administrator. And the uh, training or three, three, three level administrator, uh, instructor, and then a student. So student can see this, okay, but student cannot see this. Instructor and librarians, sorry, instructor and administrators can see this. I don't know why 13 had done that. That is a bit cheeky of 13, but that is the actual problem now. Lah. So even if you use AI, you use Grammarly AI, you don't, don't do anything, anything illicit, like you like, you know, you're straightforward, you did good thing, and then you just use Grammarly AI to scan, I mean, to do your proofreading, you come back, you scan. You don't even know your AI is high or not until the day that you know you're gonna, your supervisor gonna check or your your library gonna check. Then only you will know the bomb will blast on your face. Then only you will know. Okay. So I would suggest if you can get your instructor account, your supervisor account, scan it first because sometimes even your own writing will show us in AI. We are facing that problem also sometimes. If your if your construction of sentence, some people has that uh, bot style writing, then your in AI will go up on its own, uh, then you need to resolve that issue, lah. okay? So, uh, after Quillboard paraphrasing this, 13 AI, it was 100%. After Quillboard, it became 89%, and that's it. I couldn't go below that. And what I did, I increased the level, okay, I increased the Quillboard level to level three. I run paraphrasing again, okay, run it, and then it only increased after that, 94%. The more I increase, the more it runs. The more I keep no level, I rerun, 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 cannot. Cannot beat really. They can beat this. This can beat easily. Equilibrium, but this one cannot beat. It's unbeatable because all of them uses the same transformer network order. If you have, if you have joined my last class, I explain what is transformer network. Okay, this is transformer network. Transformer network. Yes, sorry, transformer network. AI change it. Okay. This is transformer network, okay? This is transformer network. These are neural network layers, okay? All of them uses the same network model, okay? Mostly use this stuff it forward, okay? They, most of them, they use this. They don't use anything else. This is not, not so efficient. They normally use this, paid forward, okay? This is how it looks like, 
in actual uh, scale. Quillbot, Grammarly AI, um, size space, perplexity, uh, Jenny AI, chat GPT, open AI, open AI, everything uses the same transformer network model. So when it constructs sentences by getting the information from here and it gives an output here, okay, the way it constructs the sentences is exactly the same across all AI tools because they all use the same model. The way that the large language model writes up the English, the way it puts the vocabulary, the word, the way it constructs and arranges the sentences are exactly the same. That is the problem. All right. So that is where Quillport might not be very helpful uh, in, in the coming days, even now itself. And next thing is uh, document storage. Uh, this is a crisis actually. It's a major crisis, fundamental crisis, uh, which uh, LLMs don't tell you. Okay, LLMs don't tell you this because this is like the dark side of AI. They don't tell you because if people get to know this, lesser people will start using it, especially people with uh, protective documents. That is why large corporations are stopping people from using uh, ChatGPT. Okay, a few uh, a few examples. Already. As far as I know, Dutch already stopped already. Maxis stopped already. They are all banned the access to ChatGPT because they are uploading company documents, corporate documents into it, and it's storing all the documents and giving all the information to others. All right. So what happens is any any LLMs, any any uh, ChatGPT, perplexity, whatever. It's important to keep in mind is from a very, very uh, strong website huh, which advocates for AI in education and how to use it and so on. Okay, so it's important to keep in mind that LLMs cannot come up with new ideas, reason or use logic. This is the first fundamental requirement or important that you need to understand. LLMs cannot come up with new ideas, cannot come up with reason, cannot come up with logic. As for as much as you think it's very intelligent, it is actually quite limited. It's actually quite limited. Okay. It is only spinning the information the flow already has to give you an answer. It is not creating new uh, ideas for you. Okay. Essentially, it is not really creating new phenomena for you. It is just telling what the large scale information it gets. It synthesizes and tell you this is the right information. That is intelligent, definitely. Otherwise, you have to go and read each and individual papers that will synthesize everything and give you a summary. But that summary is not new. It is a synthesis of existing information stored inside. Okay? So whatever you get from ChatGPT is actually used by someone else somewhere. Always remember that. The AI used in the LLM algorithms, large, large language model algorithms, simply predicts the next word most suited in a sentence. It is not thinking logically that I have to give this answer. It is thinking that, okay, this will ask this question. This is the most appropriate answer that I have. I'll give this answer. Okay, or I'll create an answer based on this and I'll give it to him. That's where hallucination happens, okay? Halluc People all call it fake content. I also last time call it now, but the right technical term is hallucination, okay? When people on drug, they will hallucinate, okay? Same thing. They call that AI hallucination. It will give you a lot of fake information. It will assume and create fake information by synthesizing all this. We might think it's new information, actually is hallucinating. It's not creating new ideas. Huh? Even the existing ideas, the flow will, won't be able to interpret properly for you. So that's why the flow gives you fake information. Fake year, fake synthesis, fake critical review, and so on and so forth. Okay? So this prediction is based on the text that was used to train it. This prediction uh, is based on the text that was used to train it. Okay. So using ChatGPT in a scientific writing okay, poses the very real risk that that's similar to what LNM is giving you has been already written somewhere by someone. Always remember this. Okay, if the flow can give you text similar to someone already written, this is not me, uh, this is the website, I'll give you the website later. If it's giving you the text of someone else, to you, how long it will take before it gives you to someone else? That is the risk. Okay. And today I'll show you a real example of that. Okay. Why I'm telling this to you? I'm not telling you to stop using AI. Use AI, but use it one way only. Don't go both ways. Okay. When I say both ways means don't upload your document. Upload a document, chat GPT and ask the flow, hey, what do you think about my ARU? What do you think about my RQ? What do you think about my variable? What do you think about my model? 
What do you think about my coding? What do you think about my uh, my uh, language? What do you think about my plagiarism? Can you rephrase? Can you prove it? Can you uh, give me new idea? Can you rewrite this? Can you uh, give me new indicator? And all that. You can ask all that without uploading your document, without uploading the essential part of your research. Okay, remember that. Huh? Get information one way only. Be selfish. Unfortunately, be selfish. If your work, because why I'm saying this, so, some of you might be very new into research, but first year, you're writing your ROQ, everything is ready. And then you're uploading, asking ChatGPT or perplexity or Jenny, I, hey, what do you think? This one, okay. Yeah. Uh, this part, this part, this part, can you analyze this part? Okay, or not? The, when the flow analyzing the first storing information, storing, 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 the flow keeping the information. Let's say you're working on COVID-19, example, uh, futuristic uh, uh, protection of COVID-19, what we can do, what policies, example. <laughs> I am someone who's writing on COVID-19 now. I have a paper already. I come along and ask ChatGPT, ChatGPT, this is my paper, what else can I do from here? Uh, futuristic part, can you give me some ideas? So you already uploaded your document, huh? The FLA has the tendency to give that information to me. Not exact words, but paraphrase version. You'll combine all that and then you put much Lego. Lah. You put all the Lego blocks together and you'll give it to me. I'll take it. I'm not a PhD student. I don't need to wait for proposal defense. I don't collect data and then go and publish paper and so on. No, I just get my, my colleagues, my students, come here. This is the study, go collect data. Collect data, come in, pop, 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 finish writing paper like me. I, if I really sit down, I can write paper in a week. In a couple of days, I can finish writing paper. Get all the diagram, everything put up together and set. Within, let's say, six months, I publish ready. Your research, your YY is coming in two years' time only. What is going to happen to your research? This is an important question many people are not asking. Many people are not thinking about it when they're using AI. Okay, this is a real phenomena, a real problem that is happening, occurring, that is being very, yeah, that is being kept very quiet. Okay, this is a conspiracy. I'll tell you the, I'll show you to the real example. Okay, so my advice to all of you, use AI in a selfish mode, one way only. Don't upload your RO, your RQ, your problem statement, the content of your paper or thesis or proposal, your idea, especially your idea, don't upload. Don't let the first see your idea. Because AI's DNA, okay, DNA eh, is to store information. That is the only way AI can thrive. Okay, it's like parasite. It needs information. Store, 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 more, 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 more. Then only does it get moved forward. Okay, all right, remember these, eh? Okay, this one I explained already, like of science, corpus, quartan, and so on. So now let's go to how to find the journal. Any questions so far before we move to this segment? Tell me on the record. Okay, no questions, fine. So, okay, uh, three techniques to find a journal because this is very, very important in case if you want to find the right journal to submit. This is the method. I'm going to give you three different techniques today. Technique number one, not very useful, okay? I would say now it's not really very useful. It's easy, not entirely useful because you're going to use individual journal finders. Wiley, uh, Elsevier, Taylor Francis, Springer. So they're only going to recommend their own journals only, right? So we can skip this. We can go to technique number two. This is absolutely impactful, okay? Why? Because this one uses a bit more manual skill, forward and backward snowballing. I always talk about this, forward, backward, snowballing. So if you go to a journal, let's say we go to Alice paper. Okay. All right, so let's say you are citing this paper. Okay, this paper you're writing now on the same area, executive coaching and so on. And then um, you want to find a suitable journal. So you open this journal, you go to the reference list. Okay, you go to the reference list here. From here, you call this backward snowballing. What is backward snowballing? You go through each and every references. You see where they have published. Because if you are citing a paper, that means the citation of that papers should be relevant to you. There will be a connection. There will be inter inter interconnection between those. So what you can do is you can take the journal name like this. Okay, all these are potential journals that you can submit to. But how to evaluate whether that journal is appropriate for your paper or not, that I will tell you is why. Okay? 
So these are all potential journals that you can go for. We call this forwards, uh, sorry, backwards snowboarding. You're going back in time. How about forward snowboarding? Okay, forward snowboarding, let's say, uh, we don't take any paper, because any paper is new. Huh? We cannot take any paper, we won't have many citations so far. There won't be citations. Uh, so what we do, we take this as an example. Let's say we look at this, uh, critical factor successful, uh, a succession of family firms. We take this, published in 2000, sorry, published in 2016, okay? So there's ample of time. Lah. So we go open here, your Google Scholar. What? Yes, or not. Okay, so this is the paper. Down here is related articles and citation. This one are all the related network. This is like literature matrix. Like if you click this, it'll give you all the literature matrix that you want. Right? All the related papers. This one, are the citation that uh, that means paper published in 2016 from 2016 until now eight nine years already how many papers have cited this particular journal so this is your literature so from there you can see all these journals which have cited uh your paper i mean your, your literature so this is european journal of something journal of business management uh i don't know what is this this is something religion science letters small enterprise research International research in business, general of interest or something. All these are potential journals that you can find. Okay. That's what we call backward and forward snowballing. All right. Now, technique number three, we get to AI. Okay. So we go to ChatGPT form. I am a premium ChatGPT user. I don't waste my money on anything else. Okay. And I don't use this for my own purpose. I just use this for classes to teach in classes how they actually use it and so on. You guys can use GPT 3.5, it's free, but I don't know how effective it is. Like, to be honest, I really don't know. I don't use it now. It's chat GPT 4 and chat GPT 4.0. Okay. 4.0 got more things, like more features. I'm going to do a video on that soon. What are the differences? Okay. So now, um, your, uh, some, some of you might be using size space, complexity, and some of you might be confused which one to use. This is telling you use need map, that we're telling you use GPT, this is telling you use, uh, the, the, what do you call that, size space, that we tell LEC, this is the consensus, which one to use. How many licenses you have to pay? There's just so many of them. I tell you, all of it can be done in GPT. I'm not promoting it. Eh? I already get uh, a proposal to uh, be an influencer to promote uh, Jenny AI, uh, Jenny AI, size space, uh, undetectable AI, hex AI, and so on. All these, they pay very good money, but I don't want to because they are not reliable. They are not stable, right? Even G but GPT don't need me. GPT is Microsoft own. They are the fastest growing AI tool, right? So, and they have ample of money, ample of money. So that's why I say go behind GPT for because it's far more reliable. Even this is not reliable. I'll show you today why not reliable. I'll show you today. But if you ask me if I'm going to uh, risk my future, I'm going to gamble my future with an AI tool, I would rather go with something that is super rich, with the best engineers in the world, with the best algorithms in the world. I would just think with this. I wouldn't trust anything else. I'm being very honest to you guys. Okay? So that's why I'm still sticking with this. I got license for size space. I got license for uh, lead map. I got license for uh, perplexity. Uh, I got license for Jenny AI, but I don't use. I simply don't use. I don't trust any of it. Okay? Perplexity is still okay. Perplexity is still the Amazon, Amazon backed company. So the AI engine is uh, quite rich. Lah. AI engine, you have to be rich because without resources, without servers, without virtual machines, you cannot build your AI. AI is huge server farms. Eh? Okay, like Microsoft investing $2 billion uh, in Malaysia. 2 billion in Thailand, 2 billion in Indonesia, all that are server pumps, huge server pumps. Okay. They need that to run AI. If you look at size space, if you look at lead map, you don't even know who's the owner, which server farm they're using. End up the engine is all open AI. Because open AI is outsourcing the engine. All of these people are still going back to open AI. They just have different features. And all of the features can be found here if you know how to prompt. It's all about how you prompt it. Okay. Example. People say, oh, I have to use lead map to do literature matrix. I have to use size space to do literature matrix. You can do literature matrix with, with, uh, with chat GPT. 
check this. I'm doing another new video on the problems that are associated with uh, literature meetings in uh, JGPK. But there's a lot of problem now, a lot of uh, hallucination, massive amount of hallucination, but it can be done. There you go. Okay. You don't need another software for that. All right. Well, but just that you will be spending more time validating the output than doing your own research. Uh, you'll be actually wasting a lot of time validating whether the information is true or not. That's the problem. Okay. So now let's go to finding a journal in AI2. Right. So this is ChatGPT4. And then I'm asking, do you think it's a good idea to publish journal during THC? Now you might be thinking, why the hell am I talking about this? Why, why I just don't ask which journal to publish? I don't want to. Because the, the, it's huge amount of data. So I want to get the first attention, like a microscopic attention in my case. So I start very broad. I get attention first. Then I narrow down to what I want to ask. Okay, that's, that's my technique. Lah. I normally call it funnel prompting. Okay, funnel prompting. Eh? So I ask a very broad question that is related to my segment. I bring the first, I catch the attention first. I suck out the attention first. Then the tell me all this reason why you should publish all this, you know, lah. Okay, just for the sake of asking. Then I ask the first, so if I'm writing a paper on executive coaching in family business, succession planning, where can I publish it? This is the same thing. Similarly, what Alice used to do. Okay. So ask and the person give me all these answers. Nothing wrong with the answers. Huh? Answers are good. Very good, actually. So family business review, general of business venture, general of small business management, intern, general of evidence-based coaching and uh, mentoring. So when I open family business review, this is a journal, Sage journal, impact factor 11.7. I'm only having a concept paper, not given systematic review. Okay, but the impact factor is 9.9 .9 and five years 11.7. Obviously, very high spec. This is Ferrari. I only got 20,000 ringgit. Okay, this is a simple example. That is how you evaluate when you look at the journal. I open this, I see impact factor 9.9. Uh, this is Ferrari. Now I only got, uh, even impact factor 2, 3 also is considered very difficult huh, for concept paper, quite difficult, right? So then I see, um, how am I supposed to buy Ferrari? Okay, I need to look for problem saga now. I only got 20,000 ringgit, all right? So I go back to here. I check the next one, General Business Venturing, which is this. Elsevier, Science Direct. Okay, is this Scopus? Because I want to look for Scopus only. Is this Scopus and Map of Science or Scopus only? What do you guys think? Anyone else can tell me whether it's Scopus only or Web of Science only or both? Okay, the answer is both. Okay, the answer is both because you got as I told you before, site score is under Scopus. Impact factor is under Web of Sites. So it's both. So I want something that is Scopus only. I don't want something that has impact factor which is under Web of Sites because I know it's going to be difficult. This is no more Proton, this is Ferrari ready. There's not even Saga, it's Ferrari all the way. So cannot, this one also cannot. But it's not, it's not the mistake of AI. It's my mistake. I never prompt properly because I, did, I just told me, where, where can I publish it? That's it. I never say anything else. So then now what I need to do, I need to prompt it again. <laughs> no, excuse me. <clears throat> the one shared above seems to be very high impact. Do you have any general index in Scopus only? Uh, this is the, the next question. Nah, anything in Scopus only. So now, definitely give me all this. General family business strategy, enterprising culture, da, 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 all this. So now I open this. Family business strategy right here. Science Direct. Now, is this Scopus only? This is what ChatGPT gave me. Exactly. This is not Scopus only. So what does this tell you? So many millions of ringgit behind an AI engine, it doesn't even know the difference between Scopus and Web of Science because it is not intelligent as we are. It cannot, it cannot think out of the box. It can only think based on the information the player has only. It'll only goring back accumulations that it'll only goring back the same information that give it to you. It cannot give you a very uh, uh, a very niche, dedicated information that the flood doesn't know. That is research is about that. Research our research is about new information. It's about new things which the flood cannot synthesize. This is the very example of that. The flood doesn't know what is corpus and map of science. 
So when you go and ask the flood to write you a new problem statement, a new uh, RO, a new RQ, a new literature review, a new critical review, and so on, the flood can just the flood writing very good, but the first source of information is just existing information. The flood won't give you new information. The flood paraphrase the same thing only and give you. So when you take that, you need to plug in your information on your own. I'll tell you how later. Okay. So again, the flow is wrong. So clearly doesn't know the difference. Okay. Now I go down again. First. The above are still web of science indexed. I only want journals that are indexed by Scopus, not web of science. Okay. Only web of only Scopus, not and now I say not web of science. Huh? Then they will give me this. All this. Okay. Journal of Family Business Management. The first one, huh? Emerald Journal. Very good. We go to indexing and matrix. Okay. Again. Site score, impact factor, five years lagi. Five years. The general is in web of science for more than five years already. Let's say you can get five years impact factor. Even that, the flow doesn't know and still give me the same crap only. So this is where human intelligence have to step in. So when Ennis got this in all his information, he just plug and play. Okay, take a summit, 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 summit. Without knowing what is impact factor, what is site score, my what is my paper, what I have in hand, and what are these journals? Am I good enough? Not am I. Is my paper good enough for this, all these journals? That is where your human intelligence has to come in. That's why when you use AI, you're supposed to know more than the AI. Then only you can investigate. Then only you can know whether the hallucinating information to you, the first, like, like, like the, the statement given earlier, right? The first job, <coughs> now we connect back with this, huh? The AI used in LL simply predicts the next word most suited in a sentence. That's it. That's the main primary job of the flood. This is what many people cannot accept because they are so into AI, they, they think that their whole life depends on AI now. It's so, uh, it is so, um, um, it's so influential that they, they forget that it's just a machine. It's not human. It, it may, may think that the flood is more intelligent than us. Actually, it's not. We are actually. In what we do, in what we know, we know best, we are more intelligent, right? So the flood just predict the mess, next next most suited word. Whether it's correct or wrong, the flood don't care. All right? Always remember this, huh? So, let me go back to AI. Okay. So, that's where you need to step in. Uh, when Alice started, I mean, Alice submitted to all these journals. She submitted all this. This is where she got major rejections. Obviously, you, know, you only got concept paper without systematic review. It's just a basic concept paper. No results, no empirical data. It's going to be super difficult. This people are not going to consider. It takes a lot of effort and she wasted more than uh, six, seven months just because of that. So now you take information, you're supposed to be able to synthesize that information. If you're not, uh, if you're not having enough knowledge to synthesize that information, then better get someone to tell you whether this is correct or not. You can take the information to your supervisor, tell this is the journal. Of course, you cannot take the problem statement if your supervisor lies. <laughs> it's not going to be happy or she's not going to be happy about it. But like general suggestion or general submission and so on, you can tell these are the journals documented by AI. These are the impact factors. These are the site score. These are the quartiles. Do you think our paper good enough or not? This is how you can synthesize. Right, but if you ask me, the best is always whether backward, forward, snowballing, or AI. Both also you can use, but you need to evaluate and decide based on your paper. All right. So next part, <laughs> types of journal papers. We got two kinds of papers we should focus on. One is original research. One more is review articles. Okay, the rest all we don't care. We only focus on these two. This one you need data. This one you don't need data. Okay. Excuse me. All right. So, um, uh, under reviews, the review paper, now we talk about review paper, we don't know about empirical paper, we focus on review paper. So, under review paper, systematic review and scoping review is what we should aim for. Because being honest, that's what I do. I don't tell people to do what I don't do. I do. And I do systematic review. I do scoping review. I publish both. And I can tell you, it's a bit more, it's not easy, but it's a bit more reliable 
when it comes to publishing compared to narrative review based uh, meta analysis i don't recommend because it's very complex very very complex meta analysis okay coconut is for move for medical lah all right so um, and you have to follow prisma guidelines here okay the prisma diagram given in telegram group right yeah here is the prisma diagram <coughs> excuse me if you go to my um, telegram group if you're not in my telegram group please let me know uh, this is the <coughs> excuse me sorry this is my prisma diagrams okay you can download and use it uh, this no not my prisma diagram prisma diagram i've shared and then these are all the sample review papers you can look at okay if you're not in the telegram group you can let me know i will uh, share the link all right okay now <coughs> depending on the type of review paper you want to write whether narrative scoping or systematic this is narrative review okay if you want to know more about narrative review you can download this particular note uh, from telegram group okay then for scoping review you can download this particular note okay the full uh, pdf is given here if you go to uh, review paper notes you can see the pdf file given here scoping review you can open this okay you can read through how to write scoping review every simple breakdowns are given here by detail and this is systematic review or this is the meditative review right so for those who are not in telegram group yet you can join in through this particular link all right okay and doctor and bravo to i've shared already yeah no problem no worries okay so these are all the notes you can go through to understand on your word i'm not going to go into through, through the details uh, now before we continue let's take a short break okay before we go into potential extraction of journals by using my hourglass theory before we get into this, this day, now starts the important segment and after this we go into ai again two segments will discuss about ai how you can effectively use it okay so we'll go into this shortly let's take five minutes break <coughs> a boundary okay yes. a boundary I'll come back okay so now let's get into the extraction part uh, i believe there is no any question so far so i think everything is clear so far all right okay. so getting into the hourglass theory okay, what is it basically <clears throat> this is the entire development of a uh, development life i won't say life cycle a development cycle of a proposal thesis and so on for phd or masters lah so for phd you're looking at years one to three masters maybe years one to two lah. all right so when you start off you always start off broad, very broad and then you slowly narrow down like that right so you have your initial reading stage and then you have your title confirmation so in this stage is where you will write your 10 pages proposal this is what we call as step one okay step one all right so in this segment uh, some supervisors may require you to write paper, very early papers, like conference, the journal, and so on. So based on this 10 pages proposal, um, we have seen student writing conceptual paper before, okay, narrative or scoping or systematic review also can be done. But I would advise, uh, if can, both, lah, because better you finish chapter one to three and then you write your papers. But if still they require you to write, then you can do it here. Okay, let's say this or not that. After your 10 pages proposal here, once it's completed, then you get confirmation. So probably said, okay, you know, they want more information, but they like the, the direction of it's going and so on. Then you move to chapters one to three. Okay. So this being introduction, literature review, here got problem statement, and then here got methodology. So this one was pretty clear. Lah. Some people write chapter one to four, some people write chapter one to three, because two, they'll break into two chapters. Chapter two, they'll bring into two and three. So method will go to four. That depends on your structure. That doesn't matter. Lah. But the, 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 the analogy is still, the content is still the same, the flow of content, right? <laughs> now, from this chapter one to three, as soon as you are done, you can extract a systematic review from the chapter two, right here. here you can get it then. For chapter one to three, all three chapters you can create conceptual paper either by using narrative scoping or systematic review also okay this will be looking at the more literature perspective this will be looking at your solution perspective right so good examples here will be these two papers okay that we worked on 
So this is uh, Nasir's protocol paper, which is also known as conceptual paper. So uh, it's a protocol for mixed study paper. So this is how a protocol paper will look like or concept paper. Like concept paper usually have conceptual framework. <clears throat> this one not a conceptual framework. Okay, then this is systematic review from dedicated from the chapter two itself. Right, so this one has space mouth of uh, reporting and so on. So you can observe all that. That is the uh, uh, difference in terms of content, like in terms of flow, structure and so on. Now, once that is done, then when you go into, after your proposal defense, you go into data collection mode and so on. So you get a chapter four and five done. From here, you can extract meta-analysis paper if you want to. Not a norm, but if you really want high impact paper, a good type of science paper, meta-analysis is a way to go. Or you can just focus on empirical paper. If I were you, I would focus on empirical papers first. I won't do meta-analysis first. Meta-analysis is like bonus. If I want to do, I will do. If I don't do, it's okay. But empirical papers are definitely good papers that you can uh, easily publish. Right? But we don't wait until then. We first secure our publications first before even going to this. Because this is already towards the end of your PhD or master's. You're going to Viva already. So, as I told you, publication will take time. So, it's too late to start here. You should start here. This will give you time to get acceptance before your Viva. Right? So, this is chapter 4 and 5. Then, as part of your thesis future work, you'll expand again. The expansion will happen. That's why we call it hourglass theory. Hourglass starts broad and ends broad also. So, it will be another broadening space where you will tell your, your next uh, researchers, your next people who are going to carry out the research, what else can be done that you have never done? That also can be a scoping review paper. All right, so this is our glass theory of how you can extract journals out of a thesis. From here, when we blow it out step by step, this is what we get. These are the 12 steps that you go through in a PhD or master's processes. These are consulting framework. So you have your proposal, you have your thesis. Okay, these are the two uh, two important phases of a study. All right, so from proposal, okay, you got step one to step six. So step one, as usual, I told you the broadening space, right? So that's where you do your 10 pages proposal, you get approval, then you go to chapter one to three, you write about 80 pages proposal, you, you finish up, you do your proofreading. So these are the first three initial important steps that you need to go through. Uh, when we coach, we'll normally start with here and then we'll go here. And then proofreading, depending on you, you can use Grammarly. Uh, I would recommend if you're going to use software, use only Grammarly. Don't use anything else. Don't use any GPT. Don't use uh, a quill board. Don't use, uh, uh, what do you call that, uh, chat GPT. All these things, because that will result in them. Uh, quill board storing document, it's okay. Because quill board is not a writing tool. It's not going to give information to others. But... Edit GPT, chat GPT, all these things will give information to others. So don't upload your document. Grammarly won't have the tendency to give your document to others because it's only a grammar tool. But Grammarly AI, quill board the AI part and all other AI parts will increase your turning in AI. That it will create another new headache for you. A turning in AI will go up. But how far it will go up, you can watch my TikTok channel here. I've done... Uh, Detailed analysis, okay, so you can, um, how far the routine AI will go, you can check this. You can check this out, and the entire breakdown of how the routine AI works, how uh, uh, AI works in terms of real experiment, you can check out this complete playlist. This complete playlist will talk about hallucination, will what? Uh, and how you can prompt also, how you can prompt also. And this particular video, uh, this one. This will tell you how a paper reading, when you ask AI to read papers for you, how far it can hallucinate. If you don't do your investigation properly, how far it can hallucinate. That is a very good example. It will tell you things that is not even in the paper. It's not even done yet. It will tell you it's done already. That is where it becomes very, very dangerous. Right? So you go and check it out. Then you'll understand better. Okay. Then 
what is the proofreading done? Let's say if you need a human to do, then you do. Okay, it's up to you. Then once that is done, uh, okay, Grammarly also, uh, there are two segments. For you to escape the in AI, when you go through Grammarly, you will see uh, the flow will give you a grammar suggestion, a subject book agreement, the, uh, and the flow will give you word replacement and so on. That is okay. But there will be parts where the flow will rewrite the full sentence for you, the full paragraph, the full uh, one full sentence for you. That is where you shouldn't accept. You can look at it, you can write in your own word, in your own understanding. Because when you accept it as it is, your 13 AI will go up. How far it will go up? It can go from uh, 17% all the way to 79%. I've seen an example from a UTM senior lecturer. From 17% of original work became 79% because of crime mini. Right? So be very careful that. After you've done all this, then only you start extracting your journals. This is where you do your conceptual systematic review. As soon as you do it here, you can start submission already. So you will have time all the way here until your viva to get it accepted. So you've started very early, right? We have a question. Can we ask ChatGPT to Grammarly to rephrase under our previous studies and cite them? It's still being detected. Yes, it will be. It will be detected as AI writing. 13 AI will, um, you can get it. Make sure you, once you get that, you go to the paper, you read whether this information is true or not. Whatever they rewrite for you, is it really exist there or not? That's the first thing you need to do. Second thing, you need to rewrite into your own human-based writing. Then 13 AI won't pick it up. Okay? All right. So now, uh, from here, prepare for proposal defense, your slides, your mock defense, and so on. My advice to you, always do mock defense before you go for proposal defense. Okay? After your proposal defense, normally when we coach all the part here, this part also we will coach, this is where your proposal defense correction will take place. So finish your proposal defense correction, and this one is running, yeah? this one is concurrently going, this publication. Then you move into your data collection part. Okay, we normally focus on SPSS, Smart PLS, Amos, and Vivo, Atlas TI, eViews, uh, Python, many different things. Lah, okay? Then from there, you finish your chapters four and five, you combine all, you integrate, you make it into chapters one to five. Yeah. Okay, from these chapters one to five, then you can easily extract out empirical papers here. See, if you don't write your review paper here, then you have to wait until here to write your, your empirical paper. That is a very short distance to Viva reading. Only a couple of months. The review process is going to take time. So that's why it's very risky for you to don't write here, but only write here because it's very close. And without these papers, you might not be able to graduate, even though you finish your thesis and Viva. All right, so... Uh, make sure you do the extraction here and don't waste this. Write this. This is very good results that you can use for publication. And then this proofreading, I always advise to hire humans because whatever you write, make sure you hire a human. Can be anyone. Can be Elsevier. Can be uh, UITM language department. Can be anyone. Okay. <clears throat> hire them. Read. Proofread. Okay. Make sure they understand what exactly you are trying to deliver. It's very important because that's those are the exact point of view, POV, you will get from your external examiners also during Viva. Okay? From there, prepare your Viva slides, your mock Viva and so on. And then your Viva. After Viva, you, you can get five different uh, results. You can get no correction. Uh, we managed to get one last year, last year, August, uh, Dr. Siti, uh, Dr. Maisara. Okay? from UM, medical faculty. That is one of the few we have gotten so far. Uh, minor correction, it is definitely doable. Major correction, still okay. Major correction, still okay. Uh, but what you don't want to get is major correction with Viva or um, total fail. This two is what you don't want to get. So always aim for these three. No correction is almost quite impossible. Uh, if you ask me from uh, 10 plus years of coaching and consulting over almost 38, 39,000 documents we have completed coaching. Only, I would say, five or six, you have gotten Viva zero correction. Okay? Not all the time. Most of the time, it's minor correction. Nah. All right? So, um, proofread here. Make sure. Okay? Go for Viva. Make sure you get more Viva with a supervisor. Okay? Make sure you get that session. And then, Viva. Correction. Then, 
Correction, you need to prepare very detailed examiner response document. Same thing you need to do here. Examiner response document. I have given an example uh, of response document, I think, uh, somewhere in one of my video. I don't know which video, but I'll try to find it. Okay? So that is what you need to go through. So you have another question. What is the accepted percentage of AI plagiarism? Uh, so far, uh, false negative, uh, sorry, false positive would be 20%. 13 AI, they call it false positive. That means mistakenly uh, or, or accepted level of 13 AI is still 20% so far. Most universities are like most universities. Okay? So that is the entire process and that is where you extract papers. Now, the next portion of the class, uh, chat GPT for systematic review. Now let's focus on the systematic review per se. How do you create um, RQ? RQ is like the first and foremost important thing when you're going to write a review paper. Okay, and remember, those RQs might not be the same as the RQ in um, in your thesis. Excuse me. Yeah, PICO. PICO is, is definitely doable. Okay, that is one way. But sometimes those PICO might not be very relevant to a review paper RQ. Because... Sometimes your review paper RQ might not be the same as the RQs you have in your thesis because that is empirical study. This RQ might be more relevant to review studies. Okay, it might be overlapping, but not ex might not be exactly the same. Sometimes the same, most of the time not. Okay, PICO is one of the good method you can use as well. I taught PICO last year, well last year, in UITM. So you can get the recording. You can see I've already shared about PICO. All right. So now. I want to get an RQ for systematic review, okay, in a, in a topic that I'm very interested in. But I don't want to upload my document into it because then the flow can register whatever my ROQ is, what my study is, my problem statement, and so on. Okay, so what we do, we ask the flow, do you know the process of Prisma for systematic review? As I said, broad, then you funnel down, okay? Then the flow says, yes, I know Prisma is preferred reporting, either systematic review, meta analysis. Blah, 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 and they do all this and so on. Okay, that's fine. Okay, all this good. Then, now I go to the question that I want. What would be the research questions for the topic of executive coaching in family business succession planning? Okay. So here is the, is the paper, Ellie's paper, right? A conceptual framework, executive coaching, family business succession planning, the Malaysian context. So I go to a research question. How would executive coaching contribute to business leadership transition to the next generation? Next generation is the next page, the word generation. Okay, this is the single RQ. How would executive coaching contribute to business leadership transition to the next generation? Okay. Now we see here. This is very, very good. I'm being very honest on this is very, very good. Where the flow already gives you all the potential RQ uh, that you can work on if you want to do a systematic review and so on. So these are all the potential area that you can work on. But remember something. This is not a new RQ. This is a paraphrased RQ. Whatever information the flow gives you are, is from others. Paraphrased. Taste a bit. Okay, they sprinkle a bit of Maybe hallucination, maybe uh, just to look different and so on. I don't know how it works, like the internal engine, okay? So if you look at the first one, how effective is executive coaching in enhancing the leadership skills of potential successes in family businesses? Sounds very familiar, right? Absolutely and extremely familiar. How would executive coaching contribute to business leadership transition to the next generation? How effective is executive coaching enhancing the leadership skills of potential successes in family businesses? It's just the paraphrased version of the same RQ. Exactly the same RQ. So if you are, if you get very excited of AR, you might be thinking this is a new RQ, but it isn't. When you upload your document into this kind of AI tool, the flood record your document. Then someone else like me comes along and asks for RQ to work on this area, the flow will give your information to me. Now, Ellie's got no problem because Ellie's published already. But if this is not published yet, then if your work is not published yet, then your work might be accessible by others. 
hopefully no one is, no, you never know the chances here. So better don't take this chance, right? You will be even afraid to give your thesis to someone who you know might know a bit. Like, you know, someone ask you, can I look at how your thesis is? I want to look at a structure. Some people don't give. Many of them don't give you. Even I myself, I might not give. Okay, because it's my work. I have to graduate first, then I can give. But here, we are openly uploading into AI uh, platform, which will give out your information for free, willingly to millions and millions of people out there who can just reuse your information. This is the perfect example of that. Okay? So first lesson, you can see live, I'm showing you, is exactly the same RQ. So this shows us two important information. One, don't upload your document. Don't. It's only one way. Eh? Don't go both ways. Don't upload. You want to upload publication, ask the upload to synthesize for you. Okay. Don't upload your own writing. That's the first important information. Second item. Okay. Whatever information the flood gives you might not be entirely new. Not might not be. It won't be new. It will it is just a, 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 a refried dish in a different uh, plate. That's it. Okay. By exactly the same dish. Right. So what you can do here then, then you might be thinking that how do I use AI to help me? Now, this is where your actual intelligence have to come in, not artificial. Artificial already give you, now nah, this is all what people have done. So now I tell you some people have done, ah, that's the cheeky part of it. Now, now I'm telling you, it's all people have done. It's all people did already. You go and check, surely you'll find somewhere these this similar papers. Now, what you can do, you can take this, okay, expand it. All right, expand it. So what you can do, how effective is executive coaching and enhancing the leadership skills of potential successes in family businesses? A different idea would be how impactful would be executive coaching in enhancing the leadership skills and improving the strategic communications of the potential successor in the family business. So then now you're looking at leadership and strategic communication both. You can add more if you want to make it more noble. You can put uh, leadership, strategic communication, and human resource management. Okay, those three are all uh, business development, or technological uh, enabling, or technological know-how, uh, something like that. So uh, a successor will know about leadership to manage people, communication, how to talk to people, and tools, how to run the business. So all three, you can study in the same systematic review paper. Right? So that is how you can enhance. You know this one done already. It will take you time to go and read and find all this. So now this will already give you. This is not limited. Nah. This is not an exhaustive list. But at least you've got somewhere to start. Okay, there could be any many more journals out there similar. But you can take this. You can patch out. Okay, massage a bit more. Put in more information. Not just paraphrasing. Paraphrase only doesn't work because this is an existing work. It's already there. Reviewers and your examiners can easily find like that. Okay. That means if it, let's say you take now the first slide, you write a paper. You cannot because the exact paper has already published by Ellis. This is Ellis RQ. But you won't know because some of, some of us might be thinking AI is super intelligent. It give you very new idea. It cannot. The project is going the same thing only for you. This is what people don't tell. Right? So what you need to do now, you take this artificial, you plug in your actual intelligence, you expand the flow, you put in more uh, recipe more uh, variable, more new things to study along with the existing study. Okay? That is what you can do here. This is how I will, this is how I tell AI assisted uh, development. So the flag assisting you, telling you all this done already. This, that means the moment the flag gives you information, you know this is not new. This is someone else's information, the flag refry back for me. Okay? So let me know my SLR final paper, only five, only five that meet Inclusion criteria, okay, uh huh. Can we, this five paper make the article impactful? Except no, it's too little. You need to expand your, your inclusion criteria. You need to. Uh, Fatin, very crucial to paraphrase. Not only paraphrase, you need to really uh, expand and put your own idea into it as well. Okay? From there, <clears throat> now we go into inclusion exclusion criteria. Okay. Inclusion exclusion criteria, I would not use AI. Okay, because it is very sensitive. I would not want to go wrong in this because this is where I decide what I want to include and what I want to exclude. I have already designed a template for that. You can download this template from my Telegram group. 
Okay, you can download. Uh, it's free. Okay, inclusion exclusion criteria template from a title. How do you break down the keywords? Okay, and how you define your inclusion exclusion criteria? And there are two different levels. So let's say you don't have enough paper. That means you're doing this. You have very little inclusion criteria, very highly precise, but no sensitivity. No sensitivity means you won't get, that means let's say you have a boundary condition like this. This is a boundary condition. This is your inclusion criteria, okay? This is very small that a bit of overlapping also you, you don't want to take. All these papers, slightly out of here, you don't want to take. You are absolutely and uh, um, uh, equal, uh, equally, you only want to take these papers only. You don't want to take all of this, right? Now, what you can do, you can expand the inclusion criteria a bit more. You can loosen up a bit. So you can uh, reduce the precision and make it more highly sensitive. So you can include all of this. Overlapping ones also you take. So then you can exclude whichever is not relevant. So at least your prisma will look much more reliable. Okay, that is the technique. Like normally we, we, we try to uh, adjust. Okay. About then from the, there, once you have already included what you need to include, you build your literature matrix. All right, literature matrix by any tools, the summary is horrible. Okay, it's not true. Size space is the same. I know size space is very well known to literature matrix. It is also a lot of in the hallucination. So if you look at here, whatever key findings, whatever um, uh, relevance to research, all this you need to recheck the paper again. Okay, don't just take pluck and play. Even the year was wrong. Okay, even the year of the paper was wrong. Okay, so all this is a lot of fake information. All right, you need to go through again. All right, this template is given in my Telegram group as well for you to go through. Now, let's go to extraction processes. Okay, so step one of three, there is no one single formula for extraction of content. There is no one straightforward formula for it. Excuse me. Your thesis is the anchor. Remember, one thesis equals to one paper only is total disaster because you're not using fully utilizing your content. You can actually generate way more than that. You can generate easily one concept paper, one SLR paper, and one empirical paper. Minimum requirement, you can generate that much. When and how to generate is how you have to do your strategy. Lah. Okay? So always the easiest method is to slice by conceptual SLR empirical. Salami slicing is a bit difficult because you only slice your data, uh, but then you are waiting towards the end only you're writing the paper. So that is something I don't encourage. Lah. About the okay, best technique to write a paper is by reverse engineering. Okay, so this is a very good paper by Dr. Herold. Look at this paper. This is his first SLR paper, Mirror Mirror on the Wall, 2019 published paper. I worked on this personally. This is his masterpiece. Lah. Okay, uh, we proofed it and paraphrased the paper. Uh, if you want an example to look at, this is a very good paper to look at before you start writing. Then, for a narrative review concept paper, this is a good paper to look at. Also, you can download from my Telegram group. Uh, this is impact factor 13.4, very high impact factor. Eh? And then, for those who want to publish in Scopus only, you need a concept paper with scoping review. You can look at my own paper. This one, me and uh, Parvez, we wrote together. Okay, now this paper is no more MDPI. This is Elsevier now. Okay, Elsevier. How to do reverse engineering? Very good question, Kartika. So basically, you read the paper. Okay, once you read the paper, you go segment by segment. You break down how they write introduction. You break the introduction, what they do first, what they do next, what they do after that, what they do fifth step, sixth step, seventh step. You try to mimic and create your own writing flow for your own topic. Then you go into literature and you see step by step how they're doing it. From there, you reverse engineer. Okay, so this is now owned by Elsevier. You can have a look at this also as an example. Eh? <clears throat> no problem, no worries. So then the final step for extraction requires you to have very good paraphrasing skill. You need to improve your paraphrasing skill. Don't rely 100% on tool only because certain content cannot be rewritten well with, particularly with tools, cannot. Many people will agree with me. So you still need to step in and do your own work also, okay? So paraphrasing is the step number three, the most crucial step, so that your papers individually look different. A boundary. Okay. Now, rejection at editor's desk. What are the recipes to overcome this problem? 
language. Always proofread your journal before you submit, not after you submit that. Eh? After you submit, don't waste your money. Why you want to waste your money? You have to proofread before you submit. No problem, Elma, no problem. You have to, reverse engineering, basically, you need to understand how the flow of priority. Look at the structure. Break down every full stop, break down, break down, break down. See what they are doing, the development cycle. Then, similar to that, you do your part. That is how I learned. It was very effective for me to learn that bit. Okay, make sure your language is top spec. Abstract is well written, very, very important abstract. Your cover letter is crucial, how you explain your paper. And lack of novelty is a major problem. Lah. This one, you need to fix your entire content. Lah. But these first three is usually the problem. Okay, it's usually the problem. Then at renewal stage, they won't bother about all this. They will bother about your novelty, still carries away, still carries on. Um, content problem, unrealistic claims, not a timely research. These are other problems that you'll face during the viewer stage. Okay. Then, after your proofreading, make sure you submit this with your document. About yes, the beginning of proofreading, make sure you have this and submit this. This will be very, very helpful. Then, how your document must be after a human-based proofreading. Okay. This is Dr. Harold's paper, which we worked on um, years ago. And that is what we do to a paper when we paraphrase, proofread, edit, and structure. And that is the outcome of the paper in Perfecto 11.072. And not only paper, even for proposal and thesis, you know, series that we work closely with, we offer up to 30% off. Oh, okay. About to 30% off, which only for proofreading, translation, formatting services, not coaching, consulting, and so on. Lah. And you will get lifetime language warranty with our proofreading. Free certificate and lifetime language warranty. About okay. it. Finally, cover letter. You don't have time to go through the entire thing, but let me just quickly show you. So this is the sample letter I'm going to give you. Okay. So you will get, uh, normally people only write this. Okay. And then thank you, put the signature there. This is how lazy you can be when you write cover letter. And that is how they'll treat your paper also in a very lazy manner. You have to show enthusiasm when you write your cover letter. This is like you're applying for a job, you write cover letter. So this is where you talk about the contribution of your paper. This particular segment, you can follow my example. And this is where you will talk about your call, your uh, actual, uh, this, sorry, this is your contributions. This is the problems you're tackling to support the contributions. And in this, you need to talk about how the journal will get citations also. That is very, very important, okay, in this segment. And then finally, it's an original work. That's it. So you can reverse engineer this, use it for your, uh, for your paper whenever you submit. Okay? So, three notes for today's class. You're going to get uh, the SLR paper from Aerol, uh, Parvey's uh, concept paper, the cover letter in uh, Word document, and then concept paper from Prof. Sazali from uh, PBS Putra Business School, UPM. And then you're also going to get from UM a plus one scoping review paper. So these are all the papers I've known personally to be awesome. Okay, you can take this as an example to look at. Okay, and for those who are stuck in their journey, whether publication, proposal, or thesis, uh, we do provide coaching and consultancy, whether it's uh, concept paper or systematic review paper, empirical paper, uh, proposal, and thesis as well. Okay, so what do we do? We will normally focus on PhD proposal or master's proposal consultancy, Scopus Web of Science publication, defense preparation, proposal defense examiner response, how to respond to examiners, data analysis and interpretation, thesis to general conversion, VIVA preparation, we will teach how to prepare for VIVA, and finally, thesis examiner response. This is what we do. Lah. Okay? So with that, uh, upcoming class, next one would be focusing on chapter one, background to problem statement. And most likely the final class will focus on systematic review. I think I have managed to combine this both into one class. So maybe the final one will focus on a systematic review development, 100% systematic review class. Okay. So with that, this is where we are located. If you want to see me, you can always um, set an appointment in my office in Cyberjaya. If you want to come all the way. Lah, okay. Or we can always talk over the phone. Talk over the phone. Uh, so with that, thank you very much. I've taken extra seven minutes. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, and uh, we are done for the day. Okay. Right. Thank you very much. Doctor, Doctor, over to you. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Tawa. It's very no well, ladies and gentlemen. It's a lightning journey. All right. We have the conclusion. So 
I would like to express the gratitude to Dr. Talwa for your profound wisdom and insights today. Um, and to all the attendees, thank you very much for your active participation to so all the questions asked and everything. Right, so um, the link for attendance has been put in the chat box. So you can uh, simply fill in the link. And to conclude this, let's come together, unity in Tasbih Kifara and the recitations of Surawal As. So it has been a very good pleasure. So I hope we cross our path again, Dr. Tawa oh, and everyone Dr. else. All right. So this is me signing off and bidding you farewell. Thank you very much. Have a splendid weekend and days. Bye. <laughs> bye. Thank you, Dr. Elal. Thank you, Dr. Kairo. Right. See you guys. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, Dr. Tawa. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.